Good evening and welcome to the Candidate Forum for the Altadena Town Council. We welcome our candidates and our co-sponsors, Neighbors Building a Better Altadena and Altadena Elections, who helped put this forum together. Neither Neighbors Building a Better Altadena nor Altadena Elections has endorsed a candidate in this election. The League of Women Voters is pleased to host this important civic event. We are a political nonpartisan organization promoting political responsibility through informed and active participation of citizens in government. We are nonpartisan in that we do not support or oppose any political party or candidate. We are political in that we take positions on selected public policy issues after our members have studied and we reach consensus. My name is Elsa Pendleton, you already know that, and I will be your moderator. I do not live in Altadena, I live in Pasadena. This is a requirement of our League of Women Voters is, is when we have a candidate forum our team, our moderator in particular, must not be a voter in the area under, uh, in the situation. Our league team tonight is our Zoom host, Catherine Gavsey. Question sorter is Tony Johnson. Timekeeper is Hester Bell. The program will be recorded by Pasadena Media. You will be able to see it on the League website, cha YouTube channel, in just a few days. Tonight, we bring you eight candidates for your town council. Erin Chisida was unable to participate because of work commitments. We have divided them into two groups so that your screens will not be too crowded. The same questions have already been given to all candidates. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. Finally, each candidate will have two minutes for a final statement. If you have a question, please enter it into the box from your screen labeled Q and A. This is at the bottom of, I think it's in all computers, it's at the bottom of your screen, and it will say Q&A. Otherwise, please just ignore all of those little icons at the bottom. The, we have our question sorter who will pick them up and make sure that, that any that we have time for will be handled. Depending on time available, I will report your questions to the candidates. Please be aware of the following conditions. We cannot accept duplicate questions on the same topic. Questions may not be aimed at one individual candidate, although they may address a specific issue on the, of the specific census tract. If they do address an issue relevant to one census tract, all the other candidates will be relevant and will be uh, able to respond, welcome to respond. We do not accept personal attacks, uncivil language, or questions on topics not relative, relevant to the Altadena election. And we may need to edit your question for brevity. If there is not enough time to include your question, please feel free to address it directly to the candidates on their website after the forum. So now we are going to ask the following candidates to unmute themselves and, un and start their video. Amy Lifford, Tract 4601. Connor Chipola. Tract 4601. Donald McCormick, Tract 4602. 
Nick Arnsen, 4602. And I think we have all of us right now. Yes, wonderful. I want to take this moment to introduce you to our timekeeper, Hester Bell, and her paddles. Hester, <laughs> this is the star of the show. Esther has pad paddles which indicate the time that she will be <laughs> directing at the candidates. And for the questions, answers to the questions, it will be after 30 seconds, and then she will show the stop. And so we will ask the candidates to keep an eye on Hester and her paddles. So I have the first question, and the first person I'm going to ask this question of is Amy. The question is, why are you running and what skills and strengths would you bring to the council? Thank you, Elsa. Um, and thank you everyone for being here. Um, it's, it's wonderful to participate in this forum. Um, so my name is Amy Lyford and I want to give back to the community of Altadena, which has been my home for the last 21 years. Um, I want to bring the skills I've developed as a professor at Occidental College to bear on the work of the town council, because I think I have a lot to offer in terms of my engagement with education and community and community-based connection. I've served as a department chair at Occidental. I was elected the president of the faculty and I've also worked as an associate dean of the college. And through all of that work, I have gained experience with some things that I think will be really helpful for the council, budget analysis and strategic planning, staff and faculty evaluation and review procedures, developing and analyzing the college's physical master plan, but also the architectural review and development. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right, this, the next person is Connor Cipolla. Hello neighbors, good to be with you guys. Uh, my name is Connor Cipolla, thank you Elsa. Uh, I'm running for Census Tract 4601. Uh, I was born in Sierra Madre, um, I work in La Cunada, and now my wife and I and our two kids, Ani and Micah, live in Altadena. Um, and we are truly blessed to be here, we love it. Um, I'm running to pay forward what I've received from this council and from the city. Um, during the Bobcat fires, uh, to have Victoria Knapp sending us uh, updates and uh, letting us know what's going on was a huge uh, relief uh, to me and our family, and I'm sure to many others. Um, as far as skills go, uh, I have a long history of community service throughout the Foothills communities. Um, and as f uh, for skills, I mean, I really bring perseverance, uh, collaborative attitude, uh, work well with lots of different stakeholders who disagree. Um, and try and find consensus. Um, and you can trust me to be, to represent you with integrity um, and carry your voice and not to champion my own issues or agenda. Thanks. Thank you. And next we will hear from Donald McCormick. First, thanks to the League of Women Voters for giving us this form. I live um, just north of Altadena and just, um, east of the library. Um, I am running because I'm unhappy with a lot of the directions the country is taking nationally. I think um, our problems with global warming and homelessness and uh, high cost housing cannot be solved at a national level or even a state level or for the most part a county level. Um, Kip O'Neill said all politics is local and there's a local slogan that I like. Um, uh, act locally, think globally. Um, I think that is the appropriate approach, and I would like to do something to improve the things that I'm always complaining about when I listen to the news. So thank you for considering my candidacy. Thank you. And next, let's do one, two, three, four. Nick, Nick Armisen. Hi, everybody. I've been a community volunteer my entire life. I volunteered at polling sites, local food pantries, uh, neighborhood beautification events, local school events. I, I've been running a volunteer-driven performing arts program at a local public school here for four years. 
and I'm currently the program coordinator for a CDC fully recognized diabetes prevention program. This program focuses on free local community-based health education. And I'm about to launch our third group here in Altadena, which I'm really excited about. I've held a number of jobs that often put me in a managerial or leadership position where I've successfully used my skills to settle differences and bring people together to work toward a common goal. But lastly, I've spent the last two decades as a parent and homemaker, navigating school injuries, pets, sports, uh, after school programs, budgets, all the while making sure our old home didn't fall apart. And I've served as a contractor for major renovation projects on that home. My parents taught me there's nothing you can't do, you just haven't learned how to do it yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. And the second question is, how do you plan to reach out to and involve residents of your census tract? And I'm going to start with Connor. Well, in a bygone era uh, where we used to be able to walk around and, you know, freely go to coffee shops and hang around in groups, uh, the best way to reach out to our, my neighbors uh, was to go on walks, talk, uh, to sit down and have coffee and just to be present. So we've all had to adapt. And so the best way for us to, for me to engage our census tract is still to, still to talk on walks, uh, but just a little further apart. And also I'm, you know, I'm pretty adept. It comes natural to me uh, to engage in social media, uh, all sorts of different uh, electronic media. So I think that's been a really effective tool um, for the council and something I can do as well. Uh, but also just to, uh, to be available, to be present, to you, everyone uh, in my uh, census tract will have my phone number and my email and will be able to get me and whenever I'm available. And if I'm sleeping, I, I will probably sleep and then I'll call you in the morning. Um, but just to be available and present uh, with your neighbors. Thank you. And this time it's Donald is next. Yes, one thing that I have found that I think is surprisingly effective, and I had on, I only discovered it about eight months ago at the beginning of the pandemic, um, was is a an app called the Next Door app. It allows you to select for your particular neighborhood and even your particular street, and it allows you not only to um, to find out what's going on in your neighborhood, like where the bobcats are, and you know when to keep your pets in, but it also um, allows you to interact with your neighbors and to ask for suggestions about what, what's going on. Um, I think like every other candidate here, I would also make my email address and phone number uh, available to anybody who wanted to talk to me. And um, I do agree that as soon as things get back to COVID normal of any sort, um, I would like to go back to having group meetings and face-to-face and -face interaction because there's nothing like that in the world. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. Um, Nick Armisen. Well, um, yeah, I think we're all going to probably have similar answers. Above all else, I think we all recognize it's important to engage the community. We've got so many talented and passionate neighbors out there, but we need to give them a clear way to get involved. Um, I've also been walking our local blocks the past month talking to our neighbors about this run for town council and a common theme I hear over and over is the desire for more communication and organization. It's already there, but it just really needs improvement. And in response, I plan the following steps, which you've heard many of. Um, social media sites dedicated specifically to our tract, an email list honoring privacy, um, distributing my own contact info, and in-person engagement. You know, even though we have to safely distance, we can still do that. My job would be to involve the community for optimal engagement that puts us into action, and I'm committed to making that happen. Thank you very much. And I don't see Amy on my... She's there. Green. I'm here. Amy, yes. Hi, Can thank you. In the um, well, like every other candidate has said, I'm, I'm definitely going to be using social media. I am already involved in a number of Facebook groups related to Altadena, um, but also some email lists in my neighborhood. But I have one idea that I thought other candidates might be interested in as well, and that is while we're in the pandemic at least, 
to, to have some Zoom community meetings that could be set up as an alternative to the official town council meetings where we could be more um, inviting folks to join us um, and to really listen um, and to be a kind of open house in some ways for the council members to then gather information from our constituents and then bring that back to the official town council meetings that are held once a month. And I, I think collaborating across the census tracts would make for a really interesting way of thinking about how to create a, a, a richer communication network. Okay. <clears throat> and now the third question. What do you feel are the top issues facing Altadena and how would you address them, including local effects of national challenges? We're going to start with Donald. I think the um, largest, the biggest problem affecting California right now, aside from getting over the coronavirus, which I think doctors are going to have to help us with, is affordable housing. Um, and I think uh, that dovetails with the another issue that I think is extremely important both to California and to us regionally, which is homelessness. And we see evidence of homelessness on our streets here in Altadena. Um, I drive to work every day uh, down uh, Fair Oaks, but I see people on, on Lake Street. I think we should support those who um, are already helping uh, the homeless population and to, to get the services they need and the help they, they require to thrive. And I would like to see our community continue to support the, the institutions and organizations that are already doing such good work. Thank you. And let's see, Nick. Hi. Yeah, Don, exactly. Um, <laughs> I, I had thought, housing and um, homelessness. So we've got those covered, but um, obviously community safety comes to mind. Um, a couple others, uh, climate change and race discrimination. Those have always been important to our family. And I know that addressing these issues with respect to others' perspective and an eagerness to educate ourselves, that's crucial. And always remember, the people are not the problem. The problem is the problem. So we need to stick with the issue and pull it off of um, any personal attacks. Climate issues, among other things, lead to bigger and more frequent fires, obviously, and there's plenty we can do locally on that to make an impact and inspire other communities. Racial discrimination leads to rifts in neighborhoods. Um, we should educate ourselves on unpleasant history and statistics and share that knowledge and let those around us know that racially based judgments and assumptions, they will not be tolerated. Thank you. Okay, and Amy. Hi. Well, I have a number of um, questions, actually, I'd like to pose as a way of answering your question. Um, how can we support our local businesses and um, economic development um, by maintaining the small town character of Altadena? How can we support and advance the work of community social service organizations by collaborating with the county to create more just and transparent social services and also community-based policing. How can we work with the library district and our local schools to develop programming for enrichment and engage with the community around the kind of resources that we have at the, at the Altadena Library? And finally, how can we protect and nurture our fragile environment um, at the same time that we allow and give access to that environment to people both from Altadena, but also those who enjoy coming to our beautiful mountains. Very good. And finally, Connor. This is a tough one to do in a minute, but um, you know, the number one thing, maintaining the legacy of diversity that we have in this community, it's truly unique. Uh, that's why uh, we're, you know, uh, supporting Armenian businesses who are protesting what's happening in Artsakh. That's why uh, we're marching uh, in the streets. Uh, I've brokered conversations between um, the sheriff um, and Black Lives Matter uh, to resulted in safe protests. Second, uh, the preservation of our, of our natural beauty. 
Um, I grew up here. I've been picking up trash since I was a kid. Um, I, I love our trees. We're going to make sure they stay. Uh, safety, I've had my car broken into twice. I want our sheriff station to stay open and well-funded um, and to work well with our neighbors. But also homelessness, uh, I definitely see that. I, I'm a previous employee at Door of Hope in Pasadena, and um, I have quite a bit of experience with homelessness, but uh, I want to strive to end it. That's the goal. And I want to see our businesses thrive. I want to see uh, new businesses come into our community. I want to see our existing businesses uh, you know, uh, thrive and be supported by us locally. And that's, uh, that's, that's it. Okay. All right. And that has taken us to the third question. And this is, what issue area would you be active in and which committees are you, are you mostly interested in? And we're going to start this time with, um, with Nick. With Unmute yourself, bud. Sorry, I, I think my prior response has certainly made clear my focus is on neighborly interactions as well as uh, addressing continued minority discrimination. Um, I also have a strong belief that a healthy community is stronger and more unified, and that's reflected in my work on community health issues and initiatives. Um, I'm certainly worried about fast and careless drivers on our streets. Um, street repair, especially near the parks, and working to continue the drop in crime we've seen, which is great, um, while still recognizing hot spots that need special attention. I'll be honest, all of the committees are of interest to me, but I'll tell you that at the outset, I'm more interested in connecting with the, commi with the community as a whole, and, and rather than micro-focusing on one particular committee or pet project, as some people have called it here. Um, I take the role of being a voice for the community at heart, and I'll strive to find my focus within the concerns of our neighbors. So I will first and foremost work on making that communication happen. Thank you. And <clears throat> next is Amy. Thank you. I'm particularly interested in creating connections across the census tracts, and this comes from a desire on my part to break down perhaps some of what might be perceived as barriers or disconnects between different parts of the community. I mean, we have census tracts, but we don't just represent our census tract. I mean, obviously we need to pay attention to those issues, but I would like to reach out to and collaborate more with folks from all the different tracts. I'm particularly interested in the way that um, folks in the last uh, months with the Black Lives Matter protests have really come out in Altadena and come together to talk about the issues that fracture our society and our culture. And I'd like to see um, an Altadena Town Council that takes that kind of fracturing seriously and tries to build connections and repair those disjunctures, which are often you know, really part of the social fabric that we're living through in this moment. Um, in terms of committees, um, I'm particularly interested in both education and land use in terms of my uh, skills that I bring from my um, work as a professor at Occidental. Thank you. Thank you. Conrad. Connor. I'm sorry. Connor. I like Conrad, too. That's, a, that's good. I might change that. <laughs> Uh, you know, I want to emphasize again, I, I'm not I'm not running on a, a pet project or to get something specific done. I really am. I'm looking to serve this community, to serve my neighbors, uh, to, to represent and champion your voice. Um, you know, there certainly will be things that uh, that I care about and that I, you know, get a bone in my mouth about and will persevere to see done uh, re related to all the values that uh, I just outlined in the previous question. But, you know, I, I really do. I work well with uh, with people who disagree. And I want to stitch this community together. Uh, the committees that, that interest me have to do with the values that I mentioned. I mean, there's a lot of intersectionality between education and, uh, you know, the racial disparities that exist and uh, the funding that goes into those. Um, you know, land use and parks and affordable housing are all uh, intersected with homelessness. Um, and safe streets has to do with keeping us safe and our our lights working and our sheriff station being funded. So uh, those committees interest me uh, because of those values. Thank you very much. All right. Now we have successfully completed our four, first four questions. I never answered. I'm sorry. I never answered. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I just filled you in. If you don't want to, if you don't want to hear from me, that's okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I do apologize. I'm sorry. I'm new at this. Uh, As am I. Um, so. Okay. Shall I repeat the question for you? Because I remember the question. If you, oh. the question had to do with committees that I would be interested in. Um, first, my. Um, my, my belief is that as a new member of the Altadena Town Council, my first priority would be to stand back and watch those who already know their jobs um, lead and, and tell us what to do. Second, I have, I've been a lawyer for 30 years and I have a background in um, regulatory enforcement, regulatory interpretation, uh, writing statutes. I um, have helped uh, decide who would clean up uh, environmental sites. I have helped apportion fault in accidents, and I would be glad to volunteer all of that wherever it would be um, most useful. Um, off the top of my head, the Land Use Committee and the Public Safety Committee just strike me as some places, places where that would be a good fit, but really, um, wherever my services would be of use, I would be glad to serve. Thank you very much. Okay, now it's time to get into the second half of the questionings, and we're going to ask this first group to turn off your video and mute yourselves while we call up the second group of people. And they, I'm going to wait for everybody to go away. And we're going to start with Aaron Frida, Daniel Morales, Hannah Petri. Ellen Peck, and Pat Sutherland. So we're going to start with Daniel Morales. And you unmute, please. Very good. Start talking and your picture will appear. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Do I answer the first question? or? Um... I'm going to read you the question. Okay. Why are you running? And what skills and strengths would you bring to the council? Um, first of all, thank you very much to the legal women, uh, voters, and uh, neighborhood for Bitter Altadena. Um, the reason I'm running is I've been in this community for a little over 25 years. And uh, it's a community that I really, really love it. I mean, it has the best of both worlds. I mean, we, we are in one of the largest cities in the world, and yet we're also so close to nature. So it's important for me to be back to the community. And one of the things that I've been, especially recently in the last year, and more, even more important with, uh, with the pandemic and uh, the devastation that happened to many small businesses. I mean, I have many, I have many years of experience in the business and economic development. And uh, it is my idea to get involved and bring those, uh, those resources back to the community and help many of the struggling people bring new businesses because a community that has, that is prosperous and is thriving, many of the other problems I mean, get resolved. Safety, get resolved issue of, uh, of um, issue between neighbors, uh, even social issues, racial issues, I and mean, sometimes it's an economic issue that it disguises as a social, as a social injustice. So I want to bring those resources to the community in addition to many other um, areas that might be suitable for, for getting some of my skills. Up. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Hannah Petrie. Thank you. It's good to be with you all this evening. Um, I am running because I would like to be of service to my community and would so enjoy getting to know the other members of the council, all our community partners, the constituents who share similar values of community service. I love Altadena. I want to see it safe and I want to see it thrive, especially with increasing wildfires, which are a direct threat to neighborhoods in my CT. Um, as a full-time parish minister for 16 years, I'm an excellent communicator in writing and public speaking, and I'm a trained community organizer uh, who knows how to work with government officials and volunteers to get things done. I'm also a founding board member of two nonprofits in Pasadena, uh, Jericho Road Pasadena and Pasadena's Organizing for Progress. But above all, I am a team player and 
I, like some others that have mentioned it, I don't bring a hidden agenda and I will bring a fresh perspective. Thank you. And Alan Peck. Let's see. Let's see. There are three reasons. First, it's because I want to help ensure that this jewel of a town maintains its community and family-oriented heart. Second, it's because I have the knowledge and experience to help our citizens, local businesses, and community organizations deal effectively with the prevailing municipal entities. And finally, having just retired at the end of August, I have time to give back to the community that's given so much to me. My education includes a BS in economics from the Wharton School of Business, University of Pennsylvania, and more recently, a master in public administration from Cal State and Dominguez Hills. My professional experience has been in corporate sales and management, municipal community development and procurement, business outreach, and in owning and or managing small business concerns. Thank you very much. Pat Sutherland. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Um, I've lived in Altadena for more than 25 years. I am currently the representative for Census Track 4611, and I would definitely like to continue in this position. I do it because I enjoy it. Um, I like the interaction with our residents, even with uh, under the current restrictions that we have, and I like helping to solve problems. My experience in the financial and sales industries have been valuable as is my experience as an actual uh, council member. You learn on the job, you learn what can be done and what can be a challenge since Altadena is an unincorporated part of the county, not an incorporated city. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> we're going to ask Daniel next. Oh, I have to read the next question, don't I? Um, how do you how do you plan to reach out to and involve citizens of your census tract? And we're going to start, as I said, with Daniel, with uh, Hannah. With Hannah. With Hannah. Yes. Very good. Uh, so I've lived here eleven years, and I have solid contacts in. Um, the four main neighborhoods in my census tract, the Meadows, Cheney Trail neighborhood, and Lavinia, as well as my neighborhood near Palm and Olive. And all of these folks are community minded and they will want to help. They'll know how to get the word out and introduce me to other movers and shakers. Um, who want to get things done. I know that going door to door in a pandemic is, is a little problematic right now, but um, I do think it can be done. Um, it's, it's work I enjoy as long as we, we stay six feet apart, of course. Um, also, I have ties to the uh, small business community, and I'm friends with yeah, small business owners who can further connect me to residents in my census tract. Thank you. And now, Alan. Yes, let's see. Yes. Um, how do I plan to reach out and involve? Right. Uh, so. To reach out, to reach out, I intend to piggyback on the systems that already exist. These would include existing community websites, social media, and local periodicals. I will also utilize actual and virtual bulletin boards from community organizations and local businesses and attendance at community events once that's uh, safe again. I will invite residents to be involved either in conjunction with the council or with other community organizations by participating in our many events, especially highlighting when such events mitigate the local and worldwide effects of the pandemic climate change, the economy, racial justice, and other issues of concern to the residents of our community. Thank you. Pat. Okay. Um, I currently uh, use Nextdoor as my primary method of um, uh, communication, plus a uh, email list of residents that either that don't use Nextdoor or don't fit into the exact specifications of, that, of the Nextdoor neighborhood. Um, 
Plus, I watch, I, I walk a large section of 4611 every day when I'm taking my dog Holly for a walk. Um, plus now, well, actually last week I updated my computer. So I'm also um, going to explore the possibility of separate um, Zoom meetings for the census tract. Mm. Okay, very good. Um, Daniel. I think it's important to identify the different neighborhoods uh, that exist in our census tract. There's the Meadows, there's the Lavinia, there's Jan's Village, so there's the Cheney Trail area. So I think it's identifying each one of them and what are the peculiarities that uh, each one of them bring. And, uh, and then start going to creating um, either a specific targeted mailing list and the phone trees in case that we need to get into an emergency as well as online gatherings and I do my walks pretty much every day so I mean I go around the neighborhood I mean when I get the opportunity to meet some of the people around so I start getting in, getting them involved as well and getting their contact information so that way we can release the information that uh, we will be sharing with everybody. Good, very good. Okay, the next question is going to start Driving my, drawing my line across here with Alan, and it is, what do you feel are the top issues facing Altadena, and how would you address them, including local effects of national challenges? Um, accessibility to services and facilities is one of the top issues facing Altadena. I intend to follow up on the walkability project to see where existing gaps in this infrastructure can be improved. I also hope to become involved in the next gen bus plan, the Metro Microtransit pilot, and other transportation initiatives planned for Altadena. Affordable housing is another top issue. There are many seniors on fixed income and young adults still on the lower rungs of their career ladders that need such housing. At the same time, some of our neighbors are house rich, but cash poor. Actual and virtual bulletin boards could help facilitate a symbiotic match. Such bulletin boards could also facilitate matching up gig workers in the community with tasks that other neighbors need performed. Effectively addressing these issues of housing, accessibility, and transportation will positively impact the larger issues of the pandemic, climate change, and the economy. Okay, thank you. I think it's me. With that, thank you for catching. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Okay>. Pat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, walkability and safe streets are uh, extremely important, although not all census tracts have exactly the same issues, um, which to a degree need to be addressed individually, simply because neighbors usually need to be involved in a lot of the solutions. Um, in Census Tract 4611, we're currently involved in the Slow Streets Project with Public Works. You may have seen some of the Slow Street signs um, throughout a certain, a couple sections of uh, 4611. Uh, communications also is important and mainly because people like to know what's going on even if they're not involved. We had to be specifically uh, concerned uh, during the recent fires in getting information out as to what was happening, what was going on. And uh, we currently have updated COVID-19 um, information on the um, town council website under a separate um, tab. So you can go and see whatever the latest news is. Thank you. Great. Okay, Daniel. Yes, for me, there's three issues that are very important. Number one is a healthy community. Number two is a prosperous community. And number three is a safe community. And what I mean by health is that the pandemic has created a lot of health issues for anybody. I mean, some of us have gained some weight. Some of us are being stuck. I mean, genes are closed. So we need to figure it out a way to, to find, create, create some dynamic that people can, uh, can, can recover some of the health and some of the programs that could be available. Because the healthier we are, the stronger we can become and we can avoid some of the issues of the pandemic. The second is a prosperous community. I mean, when people get incomes I and mean, they basically feel much better, they keep their homes better. So it's important for people who have jobs 
they can keep their jobs, they don't have the jobs, small businesses. And the third is a safe community. And for a safe community, we need to build trust, not only with the shared department and with the institution, but also trust among our neighbors. If something were to happen, I mean, who can you call? I mean, if you're going to be traveling. So that face-to-face -face interaction and building the trust, create a mechanism to build the trust so we can, we, can, we can all feel safe in this community. Thank you. Thank you. And it is Hannah's turn. So certainly climate change is a national world issue that we see play out in the frequent wildfires due to climate change induced droughts throughout the western half of North America. We must be prepared and our residents should really know what to do uh, to evacuate most safely and efficiently. So I've worked with the fire department and community leaders that come up with a plan that's well communicated well in advance of the next wildfire. Um, I'd like to investigate if there's anything we can do also to improve cell phone reception in Medina, which is also related to our overall safety. Um, also, the pandemic, it may last a long time, and I think the ATC should think about how we can check in on residents who are at risk, uh, whether they're um, socially isolated, um, but perhaps especially our seniors or the economically insecure, we can connect them with resources and services. I think it's gonna require a lot of out of the box thinking of all ATC members. One thought would be to have a food drive, maybe establish a small food bank, uh, working with uh, an Altadena church or school. Thank you. All right, and the final question is, what issue areas are what issue areas are you interested in being active in and which committees are of interest to you and the first person that i'm going to ask is daniel i think it's maybe me i think it is too i just I... <laughs> Not that I want to be pushy or anything, but I think, <laughs> I think I'm next. <laughs> Numbers in the box, and it's just too hard, too hard. Okay. <laughs> um, of course, I would want to uh, definitely remain a member of the Land Use Committee, since that committee is really the heart of what the Altadena Town Council does. Um, and I would probably uh, want to remain a member of the Film Committee. And I would uh, offer myself to remain on the executive committee. That's not totally, obviously, my choice. Also, I would like us to um, activate a new, uh, a new official committee to um, rework the town council website. Mm. Okay, great. All right. And now I'm going to ask Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, I mean, I see them, I mean, there's many of the committees, and uh, I mean, I want to get a little bit more familiar with some of the activities that they, they do. However, I also, um, kind of my, my pet project is to create the, the Business and Economic Development Committee. In many of the other cities and towns that I've been working, they do have that component. And as uh, we move forward into this new phase of, uh, of our development here in Altadena, I do believe that we may want to consider a little bit creating that committee so that way we can support the home businesses as well as the local businesses, bring new businesses, as well as the people who are working from home, facilitating some of the resources, funding, uh, maybe business assistance organizations. I mean, there's, there's a lot out there that we need to bring that. So, so I'm open and available, but I do want to, that's my, that's kind of my, my, my heart goes into that area because that's where I have more, most of my experience, the business and economic development. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hannah. So based on the issue areas, I've, I've already stated, I would say the safe streets, mobility, and traffic safety one. Um, but I would have an equal interest in, in the others and, you know, would want to see where help is needed, whether it's in education or, or filming or land use. Um, you know, from speaking with Dorothy Wong, my, my sitting uh, census tract mate, um, my understanding is that the whole council often has to work together to make a project go through at the county level. Um, and that's the kind of teamwork that I'm really good at and, and would be excited about. All right, great. 
And finally, Alan. As a member of the Altadena Town Council, I would be active in areas affecting housing, accessibility, and transportation, as mentioned above. I'm also interested in support, supporting and promoting local institutions, local events, and local small businesses. To that end, I hope to become involved in the Land Use Committee and in the Altadena Safe Streets Committee. Very good, thank you. And now we get into the next phase of this interesting Zoom meeting. We're going to ask everybody to start your videos so that we have all eight people, seven people. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Who am I missing? I'm missing Daniel, or maybe I just don't oh, have Daniels. Yeah. He might be on your next screen. He's there. Is he? Okay. All right. Excellent. All right. So everybody is here. We are going to call on our question sorter to and ask her if there are questions. And yes, there are questions. All right. So there we have the first question, please. What is your experience in working with the county? Okay, we're going to go around and start again with Amy, the first one. First answerer. Thanks for the question. Um, I haven't had any explicit experience working with the county on any issues since I haven't been on the council. I will say that my work um, as a faculty member at Occidental has had me working um, with the city of Los Angeles in working on projects related to Occidental College's community engagement um, from purchasing property to also creating new programming. And so I've had to attend meetings to advocate for some of the goals of the college in engaging with the community. And I would hope to bring that kind of work to my work on the council. Thank you. And Connor. Yeah, my experience directly with the county has been as a uh, persistent and probably annoying uh, resident, uh, <laughs> primarily by all the letters and phone calls they receive. Uh, I mentioned uh, in our first presentation, uh, you know, I, my streetlights were out. And so I went back and forth for months between uh, Public Works and Edison to try and figure out how to get those things replaced. And it wasn't easy, but it finally got done. Um, you know, small businesses that have wanted to open and advocating for them, um, businesses that didn't uh, enhance our community um, and, and making our voices known and representing the concerns of what I hear from my neighbors. So, uh, you know, I, uh, as a town council member, I, I would expect there'd be some, some closer access. Uh, I welcome that. But uh, I, you know, I'll champion whatever it is that our, our neighbors want to want to get done. And I will persevere until it is heard from the county. Okay. All right, um, Donald. I, uh, I have been a, a, a California lawyer for a lot of years. And so I have litigated against the city and county of Los Angeles many times. So I know how their procedure works. Um, I would much rather work with them on a cooperative basis than in front of a judge. Um, and that would be fun. But I know how the system works and I understand how their committees work and how things have to pass through different uh, legislative processes. Um, I've also been, you know, a long time, I've lived here since the early 1990s. So I've, I've called the sheriff's department in about um, getting trucks in abandoned vehicles off the street and that kind of thing. Just, you know, the ordinary day-to-day -day stuff, I understand what it's like to be just part of our community. <laughs> okay. And Daniel Morales. Mm -hmm. 
most of my experience in uh, working with the county has been in the business and economic development area. So I'd be, I mean, I'm very familiar with the Office of Small Businesses as well as the Business Assistance Program. And some of the programs that actually are specifically to Altadena along the Lincoln Corridor with the Business Technology Center, I mean, to support certain types of small businesses. I mean, I, many years ago, I had a business that was located there. So, I mean, I'm familiar, very familiar with how they operate that incubator. And, uh, and there are many other areas on Woodbury which have some specific uh, uh, component, especially as related to engineering, Caltech, and NASA. So that's pretty much my experience in dealing with the, with the county and the Altadena area. Okay. Um. And Hannah. Um, I've done most of my advocacy work uh, with the Pasadena City Council um, since I came to serve Neighborhood Church uh, in 2007 until 2016. Um, I'm also a trained community uh, organizer, and I know when it comes to working with electeds, it's about um, building relationships with their field representatives, being persistent, um, making meetings, planning your lobbying strategy, and I assume it's, uh, that's a microcosm of the county, so I have some familiarity with how the processes work. <laughs> okay. All right. Alan. Uh, most of my experience with working with the county has been indirectly through the city of LA. As a procurement official there, uh, I was responsible for a lot of business development. Now, doing business development, I would have to work with whatever agencies were required to help businesses get, uh, let's say, a uh, small business or any sort of SBE or DBE certification, uh, getting things like small local business certifications and things that would help them to uh, be a, get opportunities, particularly with the airport, but throughout the city. Um, in previous positions, working with the CDD, C, uh, yeah, the Community Development Department in the city, I was responsible for, for uh, larger projects. We were doing a lot of conversions of the empty buildings, old bank buildings downtown into multi-use uh, commercial, uh, what, uh, residential facilities that we were building there with community development money. And uh, on the bottom line, that's the end. The end. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, and Pat. Mm -hmm. um, working with the county is always a challenge simply because there's so many different parts of the county that we could work with. And the challenge sometimes is figuring out who you actually talk with. And they will, those individuals will periodically change from time to time. Um, there we, do, we do have lists that any new council members will also get to of um, the people and the best contacts in the county. Um, and I'm trying to think of, there's no, there's no real area that I haven't worked with one, at one time or another. Um, but we're all challenged with keeping up with who the person is to go and talk to. Okay. All right, and I think that finishes our question number one from the from the question sorter. So, wait, 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 wait. Nick didn't answer. Nick, Nick. Didn't answer. Hi, that's okay. Um, just real quick, uh, I just got to piggyback everybody, um, but Pat and Hannah in particular. Um, Pat, Pat's right. It's all about figuring out who you're trying to talk to, who you have to go to, and that kind of ties into what Hannah was saying. Um, it's really fostering those relationships, and and uh, I think you're totally right on, Hannah. It's the same in the county system. I know because there's three main ways I've had to deal with the county. <laughs> I hate to say it that way, so I'm sorry if anybody's working with the county, but um, we're butted right up to the park, Farnsworth here, and it's county um, operated, so I've had to um, figure out how one of their trees is knocking down our wall, how to navigate that. Um, the program through the CDC is national, but we've had to coordinate with the county because we're expanding beyond Altadena to communities that wouldn't normally get that kind of health care. And finally, um, the COVID uh, problem obviously disproportionately affected minorities. My husband is Samoan, so Pacific Islanders in particular were terribly disproportionately affected. And he started a task force that I've watched him work with the county to 
try to reach out to those communities for awareness. Thank you. Okay. And I think now I'm going to start the next question, ask the next question. What will you do, if anything, to bring back local and independent businesses to Altadena? Okay, and the person to start this is Connor. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's key, especially in this pandemic. I mean, our businesses are struggling. Uh, restaurants are struggling. So, I mean, the number one thing is, is both to, in my own actions, but also through bringing others just to be, uh, to be patroning our businesses. We need to be foregoing Starbucks and Home Depot to, to go to Altadena Hardware and Cafe de Leche. Um, our, our dollars speak. Um, and all together, we can, we can get through this. Uh, you know, as far as developing our districts is concerned, I, um, I've mentioned in the past, you know, I, I really advocated strongly for there was a mixed use restaurant that wanted to open at the Webster's uh, pharmacy building. Uh, and I thought it was unfortunate to see that not get done. I think, you know, projects like that where we can, you know, both hear from the community, uh, take those concerns seriously, but not, you know, derail projects that might enhance. Um, but also there was a dispensary that, uh, you know, on Lake Avenue that I saw some teenagers I know well going in and out of. Um, and it also just, you know, didn't really seem to enhance with its blacked out windows. So I advocated strongly for that to, you know, go away. Uh, I, re I really want to steward the, the small town vibe of our, of our businesses. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Donald McCormick. I uh, agree with the prior speaker that supporting local businesses is perhaps the most important thing that we do because the way that we spend our money um, def, you know, defines who we are. It's much easier to buy something off of um, off of eBay than it is to go down to the local hardware store and and talk to them about it. But you'll probably end up more satisfied with what you get if you go talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. I also think that we, as a community, could advocate for suspension of certain license fees. Um, people have to pay liquor, liquor license fees when their businesses are shut down. They have to pay all kinds of county um, license fees when they could not um, perform the business services for which those, um, those license fees were charged. I think if we could advocate in favor of suspending those, it would be good. Thank you. Okay, Nick. Oh. Unmute yourself. Nick. We're probably going to have similar responses. Um, Connor, exactly right on. And Donald, obviously, piggybacking all of that. Um, but I'm really curious what Pat will have to say about this because she has firsthand experience. I know um, when I first considered a few years ago running for council, one of my big things was we got to get more businesses in here. And after talking to many council members, that isn't necessarily how easily it goes. Um, there's a lot of regulation that, quite frankly, we're just a voice for Altadena. And, and as strongly as we push that voice, there's only so much we could control. So I think it's going to come back to what the gentlemen have already said. Um, really advocating businesses, supporting them, and being a cheerleader for what's existing. Okay, great. Daniel. Yes, I, I agree with the most of what uh, my colleagues have been saying, that we have to we have to support local small businesses. I mean, uh, obviously, our, our money talks, and the more the money we can keep in, in, in the community, the better it is for everybody. We also need to work with uh, the county on the zoning, as well as with the real estate uh, owners um, who own the property, as well as the people who want to rent the property, to what sort of incentives they can they can do. And for the businesses who have been closed and have not been able to make it, I mean, is how there can be some mitigation efforts to, as we were saying, I mean, some of the power people were saying with the, with the uh, discount on the license fees or some rebates or something that they can do because we need to keep the businesses local here and it's much better than just going to Amazon or going to other people. So we can identify where are the commercial corridors and the second thing is also how we can support some businesses who might be running from home. I mean, there's a lot of businesses who are running from home, and uh, we want to make sure that 
they can also be part of it and uh, if, it, uh, if it allows that uh, the community also support some of those businesses whether on a freelance basis, professional services I and mean, there's so many things that um, is not only on retail side but it's also what people are doing in their homes Thank that, you. Uh, can support. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Uh, Hannah. Yes, I, I think first and foremost, we preserve the small businesses we have. Um, I know my pals at Fair Oaks Burger and Pizza Venice and Altadena Ale and Wine House. I know the owners uh, have a fair amount of anxiety around their longevity. Um, I think when we hear about new businesses open, I know there's a new restaurant that's about to open a Mariposa. We get the word out um, to everyone in our census tracks to go support that business. Um, you know, we can, can we can canvas businesses to see what they need, see which businesses are struggling, um, see how we can help them out, increase their business, um, encourage people to patronize them. Um, finally, you know, back in the day, Magic Johnson. He came in with a, a big chunk of money and invested in a corner of Altadena. Um, you know, maybe we need to approach some investors like that and make a, a good case for why Altadena is a great place to invest in. Thank you. Okay. Um, Alan. Hi. Hi. Um there are a number of things that I would do to uh, attract business back to uh, Altadena. And I agree with what more than one other person has said. It starts with sustaining, supporting, and promoting the small and local businesses that already exist. Um, one of the things is there are so many small businesses and local businesses that we're not aware of. Uh, piggybacking on existing what communication channels, uh, social media, publications, all that sort of thing, and using those media to advertise our own local businesses. If there were, again, billboards where you could look and see what's available, even established specials or other venues where uh, that would be available to the rest of the community. Another thing is that by promoting the history of Altadena, that is the basis upon which all of our uh, local events and all of our uh, festivals and whatnot are based. With that history promoted, that would attract more business. That would get more people like uh, Magic Johnson to want to invest here in Altadena. Thank you. And finally, Pat. Okay, so uh, Nick, let's see what you think. <laughs> um, although he's, he, I think he's, he's right in one thing. The primary work that we do is not necessarily going out to bring in businesses, although you can bring in business without being, being um, quite so aggressive about it. A um, couple of things, obviously, that everybody said is you pat, uh, patronize the ones that are here right now. Um, another thing that we as council members can certainly do is um, when there is a request, and it's usually a land use request, from business, often from businesses, um, really get to understand what it is that they're looking for. Because if we don't do our job as um, council members, that uh, there may not be a recommendation going to the county for that particular business, either to open or to remodel or whatever it is that they're doing. Also, as because all census tracts are not the same, we have different businesses. Walk your census track is what I would say. Thank you. Along, along with maybe the Chamber of Commerce. Great. Next question. How are you going to support our public schools and what how they affect the Wait, wait I, I did it again. You have a raised hand. I'm sorry, Amy. That's okay. Um, I don't have a lot to add, but I did want to say that um, I think um, engaging with the Chamber of Commerce, um, which is obviously a group of, of current business owners and community leaders, is obviously one way that we can um, find out what the business community is, is in need of. I also think that in the wake, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with Proposition 15, but I suspect that if Proposition 15 passes, there's going to be an impact on some of our um, business owners who may own their own um, 
uh, business or who are renting from a landlord whose tax basis is going to change dramatically. So I think the council will need to think cl clearly about the ramifications of any kind of taxation changes um, and perhaps working with the Chamber of Commerce um, and some of our community business owners, we might be able to think creatively about how to um, pave the way for some of those business owners to gain conditional use permits and the like for the kind of business they wish to run. Okay, thank you. Now I'm ready for the next question. How are you going to support our public schools and how they affect community? Oh, and the next person is going to be Donald. Um, the public schools in Altadena are I think in need of assistance, um, if you look at the annual um, scores on public schools, not all of our schools fit into the top tier. Um, I think we should encourage community involvement in terms of, especially now that in the, uh, the COVID era, uh, people are not able to um, have their students in classroom. Um, when that does happen, we should encourage um, people to volunteer to assist and to um, try and help the schools maintain, you know, all of the, the safe protocols that are going to be necessary for on-site education. Okay, thank you. Nick. Yeah, wow, you, I risk going down a rabbit hole or it's such a hot button issue because um, I have really strong opinions about it. Um, my kids are all public school kids. And um, so I could go on and on about why the public schools are not supported as they should be here, but it's not a here situation, it's, it's nationwide. Um, there's so few communities that support public schools and to a national level, and I won't go off on on that in this forum because it's been so extremely positive. What I will say is just like Donald says, I think it involves reminding people why this is important, reminding the, the possibility that these kids have and what we're taking away from them. I don't understand how that can't be obvious to people, but it certainly is that situation. So as far as um, getting out there and what everybody has says walking, it just has to start in your community. Like somebody mentioned earlier about climate change. It has to start right here. It has to start door to door and it has to approach each person who doesn't believe that because you have to convince them it's important. Thank you. And Daniel. I think we need to separate them I in mean, the issues between public schools and private schools. And as we identify which are the, the, the fallback or the fallout after the COVID, how are they going to be able to come out of it? And, uh, and then figure it out how we can, as a town council, support the efforts for them to get, to get engaged back into, into a, a more normalized type of education system. Because as we can see, without getting into the details, there's so many nuances about what's working out, whether it's online or not online. And both private schools and public schools, they do have two different needs as to how they can come back from, from the pandemic and from this economic situation. Thank you. Hannah. Yeah, I just spent some time interviewing folks who are running for POSD school board for my podcast. And one of the things that they all said is it's so important to get people beyond parents and teachers involved and in caring about the quality of education in our community because those are gonna be our future leaders who are gonna be taking care of us someday. Um, when I was in neighborhood church, we did uh, several beautification projects at schools. I think we built four or five major school gardens in the PUSD. Um, those kinds of community events are very galvanizing and a positive experience for neighbors who you know don't have kids in the school district but are in the neighborhood they want to drive by the school and see it looking better you know replace um, 
windows, like, you know, do, do small but bite-sized projects that people can get excited about. So I, I think there's a lot of room for out-of-the-box out of thinking there. Great. Alan. Hi. Um, when it comes to schools, there are a lot of organizations that are already really focused on the major problems and challenges that our public schools have. But in terms of what the town council can do, I believe that if we question the schools and find out what their immediate needs are, that could either be uh, addressed through uh, donations by the community or addressed through activities by the community and community organizations, some activities as were already mentioned. But if uh, we can be a conduit uh, between the needs of the school and the things that the community can do, there, we can't do everything, but what we can do, we, we can help to facilitate, particularly things that really don't cost anything, but we're just channeling the, uh, we have a wonderful community here, and there are a lot of people that would love to help if they had the chance and they knew what they could do. And if we could be a part of the communication vehicle for that, it would be a benefit to the school. Thank you. Pat. The uh, town council has had an active education committee um, who is losing the chair now because since she's running for um, um, PUSD, um, that would be uh, Jennifer Lee. Um, I'd say the first thing that any, any uh, council members should do is learn who the, where the schools are in your census tract um, and know the principal. You can talk to them, and as Alan said, what do they need? There are some things that they may need help with. Um, how can you help them? Um, there are a number of things that are being done now, and uh, build on that. Safe streets to schools, um, walk, you know, walkability to schools is very important, and there are people that are working on that. So they support whatever activities, when they start having activities again, that will be very important to be supporting all of the activities for the schools in Altadena. Thank you. Amy. Thank you. Um, this is a question that truly really lies at the heart of my work. Um, I would echo a lot of the points that have already been made, but some of the things I've been thinking about that perhaps the council could do in a more proactive way is to think about how the Altadena libraries could function as a kind of um, a resource, not that they don't function that way now, but how can we advance the work of the library, but also create the kind of technological um, and enrichment opportunities that the library is already pushing forward on and connect those more explicitly to the individual schools within our community. Um, I also think that there's a way for the town council um, to work with some larger um, cultural and civic organizations around the city of Los Angeles, Self-Help Graphics, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art that have programs for outreach education that are mobile, um, that we could perhaps partner with our local schools to bring arts enrichment into the schools, which I think is one of the things that um, engages students and their families in new ways. Thank you very much. Connor. Yeah, so I mean, first, uh, I'm the product of uh, Arcadia Public Schools. Uh, it's, it's very near and dear to my heart that our public schools thrive, that our students thrive. Um, and, you know, I have very close friends with their recent um, uh, elementary school closures. It just deeply affects uh, people. And as a parent of a three and a one-year-old, um, you know, I want to see our community have great schools. Um, you know, one of the, the problems, there's a lot of problems that have existed. There's probably a lot of new ones. I, I work closely, I work with teenagers, so I work closely with administrators, um, primarily in La Cunada. But, um, you know, our teachers, the morale needs a boost. So that's why um, some others and I from our church are putting together 300 uh, care packages for our teachers in PUSD and uh, La Cunada schools as well. Um, you know, we need to, the challenges are new. We need training for our teachers. We need uh, uh, community foundations to subsidize, you know, the funding that is, is not going to be there um, as, as things uh, go, go forward. So all of that starts with the community organization. It starts small. Um, and it starts with us amplifying our voices together, which is, which is what I want to do primarily. Thank you very much. And now we are coming to the last question because we're beginning to run out of time. So let's hear the last question. 
soon. <laughs> My turn to do it. <laughs> Even though Altadena is a relatively small town, it's perceived as being divided into east and west. What would you do to eliminate this perception and work towards one Altadena? Hmm. Okay, and the person who starts that is is actually not Pat, but Nick. Oh, all right. Um, I, I just learned some history recently. Um, look, I, I, I'm mostly West Altadena. <laughs> And I learned I learned some history about East Altadena recently that was very disturbing racially. Um, but what I'm constantly amazed by is how much it's turned itself around. In I mean, it's been 60, 70 years since what I read was happening. But um, I just think communities have the ability to evolve, and that won't happen until um, one of you in particular. I think it might have been Amy or ha Amy. You had said about tracks really. Um, kind of intersecting and, and finding a, a bridge. Certainly the tract I'm, I'm in cuts off at Lake, so you've got a distinct east and west on the other side of Contra for me. Um, I think if we're able to reach to the other tracks, um, and if you're able to get the council person in the other track to do community events, it's all about the community meeting each other, I guess, is, is the bottom line for me. Okay, thank you. Daniel. I, I, for me, I think it's important to be able to have the proper branding. I think once we start thinking that we are bigger than ourselves or bigger than our census tract or bigger than each one, whether east and west, I mean that we are Altadena as a, as a brand, as a community, we might be able to come out of that, um, that uh, fragmentation that we sometimes see in some of the different communities. I think it's important that the as members of the Altadena Town Council to work on a branding that in, uh, in basically really plays to the strengths of Altadena, which is the diversity. I mean, even in the early times, I mean, a very quirky community. I mean, there has very specific issues that brings Altadena into, into very special. So I think by branding Altadena on a much larger scale, we would be able to come together as a community and not only as East, West, or or North Altadena Drive, South of Altadena Drive, I mean, those types of things that sometimes happen in, in, uh, in the community. Thank you very much. And Hannah. Well, I think at the heart of building one Altadena is certainly to build relationships, whatever creative ways we can find to do that. But beyond that, I think it is about finding the issues we all have in common. None of us want our houses to burn down. We all want safe streets. We all want interesting businesses that are nearby that we can all patronize. Um, so I think it's about finding the common ground that we all share. Thank you. Ellen. Um, I have found that in life, culture trumps rules, regulations, everything else. And right now there's a wide cultural difference between the East and the West sides. However, communication is the key to understanding and communication can be fostered by the Altadena Town Council. One of the things that I love about Altadena and that Altadena is famous for is its group events, the parades, the festivals, those things that bring people together. I believe that Altadena Council could come up with e public events, festivals that attract the East and the West to get them into one place over something that they're mutually interested in or concerned about and have them work together on common goals. I think that was already mentioned. But, or, or, or just be together enjoying common interests. But if an effort is made to uh, bring those two sides together, I think that would help. Thank Culture you very much. first. Thank you. Pat? Um, I, for some reason, I don't think of Altadena in the different east-west terms. Um, and maybe it's simply because I've gotten to know people in all the different uh, sections. Um, I hate, I mean, we say east or west just to differentiate 
what, where, what part of Altadena you happen to be in. Um, it will be wonderful when uh, we can start doing things again and start having the kinds of festivals, uh, you know, what, what you're talking about, Alan. I mean, just today when I get the notice from Christmas Tree Lane, which is in, uh, yes. you know, in Census Tract 4611. Um, the lights will be the lights will be on, but there will be no ceremony, which is too bad because it's the 100th anniversary of the of mm. the Christmas tree lane. Um, but there are a lot of those things that we can do once we can do them. <laughs> um, and we do the more we can do to support our other council members. You get to know them. You get to know where they live, and all of a sudden, the east west kind of doesn't appear as much anymore. Thank you very much. Amy. Thank you. Um, well, I said this in one of my earlier um, answers to the questions, but I do think that the council can um, work together and, and engage different census tracts. And I think collaborating across the different council districts um, would be one way that the council could proactively do this within its own um, body, but I also think there might be ways to develop programming, as others have said, perhaps focusing on the history of Altadena. We have a really rich and diverse history, but maybe not everybody understands that history or has a real sense of it, and there might be ways for the council to facilitate not just festivals or parades, but also um, events and activities, um, whether it's on Zoom or at the public library sites, to bring people to come and speak and talk about their own experiences or to learn more about the history of Altadena and indeed to bring cultural activities into some of the public parks and spaces to bring people together um, to be present in the same space at the same time. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you very much. Connor. Yeah, I'm going to echo what Amy uh, and Nick and some others have said, um, you know, unifying our tracks into our neighborhood uh, really does start with education, right? And understanding um, the history of redlining in our area and you know, mm -hmm. why some of the disparities across our town exist. Um, that very much changes, uh, it changed for me, uh, the perspective of how you see things. And I think overcoming that probably starts with, you know, Pat, you suggested uh, walking your tract. Uh, it starts also with walking another tract and you know, going out of your way to, uh, to be on the streets and to be in the businesses of, of another part of town um, where you don't live. Uh, I also think it has to do with partnership and, and uh, collaborating with, you know, the community uh, clergy coalition. And, uh, you know, I have close relationships at Harambe and, you know, although I live on the east uh, side of Lake. So, you know, I really think that those things, we can make progress, we can overcome the history, uh, and we can be one neighborhood, uh, one town. Thank you. Thank you. Donald? I am um, not going to argue with those who say that it would be great to have more large, you know, large events when we can get back together after COVID. I have lived in Altadena on and off since 1994. I have lived every day of that east of Lake. Um, and part of the reason that I moved to Altadena, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, which given my history, um, it was a problematic time in which I grew up, and I moved to Altadena precisely because it was so diverse, and I liked that, and I liked the, um, the friendliness with which everyone got along. I don't think there is any impediment to us building bridges across census tracts, across lake, across Fair Oaks, uh, building our community from all the way from Eden Canyon over to JPL into one homogenous community. Thank you very much. And now we have come to the end. I think I have come to the end and I think I haven't forgotten anybody this time around. But I want to thank our panelists greatly. You've been a fabulous group. Um, it makes me want to move right across town and good. <laughs> I was in it. <laughs> um, but you've been you've been wonderful, very articulate, very cooperative, and we we just appreciate that so much. And 
And we appreciate our co-sponsors for helping us. Now we're going to be putting up the screen, if we haven't already, that... Uh, excuse me. Uh, it is time for their closing statements, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> I know they're ready with them. So let's, let's oh, give them folks a chance to make their closing statements. Thank you. Ah. This is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing great, and, and we're all volunteers here. <laughs> okay, let me tell you who's going to start with the first closing statement. I can do that anyway. And the first person to start with his closing statement is Daniel. I do want to thank the opportunity. I mean, for me, this is a, a first experience getting into the political world. So I'm so glad that I'm doing it in the community in such a, in such a, a professional and unthreatening way, considering how the politics has been played lately. So I really appreciate that and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, the opportunity of being part of this very, very passionate, very talented group. I mean, I'm really impressed with the qualifications of everybody. I think there's a lot for Altadena that uh, we all bring together, not only us who are I mean, kind of new, even though we've been here for quite some time, but also new, I so appreciate that. So I do want to, I mean, uh, I, I, I just acknowledge that uh, I, mean, there's, uh, I, I want to bring some of my talents and resources to be part, to be back to the community. I would be delighted if I get to your votes to be working with all of you and uh, making Altadena a much stronger and much diverse, thriving community so that we can overcome the challenges that, uh, that are coming ahead. So we're, we're, we're getting into some very interesting times on uncharted waters in many ways. So I do believe that the more we act as a community, the more we will be able to, to, come, up, to come through together. And uh, if I'm honored with your vote and your participation, I'm really looking forward to work with, uh, with all of you. So thank you very much for the opportunity, and thank you to the League of Women Voters and uh, making better Altadena as well, making for better Altadena. And uh, any questions, I mean, you can also contact me as well. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And it's Hannah's turn next. Yes, a big thank you to the sponsors of this forum. I know it's a bit of work. I think Daniel and I are the only ones who are, uh, where there's three of us running. So I want to say that I know both of my opponents would do a great job. So let me focus on what I think I can uniquely bring, uh, which is as a minister, it's the ability to work really well with people with different personalities, different agendas. When there's tension, I can be a strong yet a non-anxious leader and encourage a group to work together using each of our different talents and skills. I bring a passion for social justice. I often say that the reason Altadena is the best place to live in America is its organic racial diversity. This is so hard to find in the rest of the country. I'm really good at relating to people of all walks of life. Uh, my personal community in Altadena includes people who work in the service industry, in schools, as business owners, attorneys, even as farmers, and of course, uh, folks who work at JPL. I have the capacity to reach a lot of different kinds of people and empower them to be involved. Um, in terms of the racial division facing the country right now, be because of all the reasons I've stated, I think Altadena really does have a unique opportunity to be a model of what a diverse American town should look like and can look yeah. like that thrives and lives in peace and appreciation of one another, whether it's East or West. And I just think together we can address the tough problems that uh, face all of America, but here as well, things like homelessness, the climate change, quality of public education, and bias in policing. So I would be glad to put my blood, sweat, and tears into these worthy endeavors for a stronger Altadena. So thank you for your vote. Thank you. Alan. <clears throat> Yes. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. But let me say that I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. After graduating from public high school, I attended the University of Pennsylvania, graduating from the Wharton School of Business in 1976. In 1988, I moved to Los Angeles based on my brother's accurate ravings about the weather and the opportunities. 
However, it wasn't until I got married, had a child, bought a house in Altadena in 1995 that I discovered the true benefits of living in, living in Southern California could be. I was surprised by the gracious and generosity of our new neighbors. I was impressed by the quality of the municipal service, and I was truly amazed by the wide array of community events in which my family and I participated enthusiastically. My municipal, corporate, and entrepreneurial experience has afforded me many opportunities to help individuals and businesses interface with and receive benefits and services from a wide range of government agencies. I also earned my MPA in 2015. Among other things, this gave me a fairly clear understanding of the authorities and responsibilities of the various arms of federal, state, and local government. I will bring this background of knowledge and experience to the Altadena Town Council as I pursue the following platform. Enhancing community services and addressing community concerns. I will work with the council to ensure accessibility to public services and accommodations and to develop more affordable housing options for seniors and young adults. Two, promoting and supporting community institutions and traditional events. Primarily, I will endeavor to promote Altadena history the deep well from which all of these institutions and events have sprung. And three, promoting and supporting small local businesses. Uh, I will investigate opportunities for public and private partnerships, and I will maintain a balance between community businesses and national chains. Thank, Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Okay. Um, Pat. Okay. Um, rather than tell you why I think I'm the best person for this job, I'd like to tell you why I like doing this job. <laughs> my past has prepared me for my present and my future. In both my careers in retail and in banking, the recession was afoot uh, in several large national companies that were being forced to go through reorganization when I worked for them. I actually lost count of the number of times I was laid off and rehired by the same company. Bank of America. But each position ended up preparing me to do an even better job in the next position, and all of them prepared me for the wide variety of things you do as a council member. There are days when it seems like nothing is going on and days when it seems like too much is going on. Um, there are things that as a council member I must do and hopefully am successful at doing it. Uh, to attend uh, monthly council meetings, plus meetings for any of the uh, committees I serve on, responding to residents' requests for help in dealing with county services, communicate on a regular basis with residents in my census tract, and understand the necessity to listen and not to insert myself into a problem. These are the things that I should be doing. Don't take everything personally. Often criticism is really a reflection of the resident's frustration with a situation. Maintain a sense of humor and realize that everything is not about moi. And support fellow council members, um, offer help when needed, but don't tell them what to do unless you're asked. To be honest, this one's really hard. This is what I get to do. I learn what's really happening in Altadena. I meet a lot of very interesting people, a whole bunch of faces that I can see right on this screen. And I feel like I'm making a difference to my community. This is what I like and obviously why I want to continue in the job. To the residents of 4611 who may be watching, thank you for your support in the past and I hope for your continued support next week. Thank, thank you very much. Amy, Amy's turn is next. Okay, thank you. Um, I really appreciate having this opportunity to speak with the community, to hear from my um, fellow candidates. It's been really interesting to hear their perspectives as well. Um, I guess I just want to close um, pretty succinctly by saying that there are a few things that I really prize and value in my life, both in my work life and my personal life. The first is connection and connection across boundaries, whatever those boundaries might be, whether they be geographical um, in terms of age, background, ability, um, language, or culture. Second, um, social justice is a great passion of mine, and it's a really important part of the world that we're living in right now to fight for that um, and to really engage and connect with people around the sense of justice 
in both social and cultural um, activities, but also I think in particular for Altadena, as close as we are to Pasadena, um, we need to really work hard to think about how our community might have a different model of policing than we've seen in um, Pasadena of late. Um, and I'm particularly interested in working with the council and our representatives at the county to really think about how to move forward with um, the LA County Sheriff's Department. Second, a uh, third, excuse me, transparency and good government um, are a really important part of the work I've been doing throughout my life, particularly while I've been a professor at Occidental. Um, I'm a pragmatist. Um, I like things to get done and I'm willing to and I'm interested in brokering ideas and leveraging connections with people that are real connections in order to make things happen. Um, that also means sometimes um, fighting for consensus but recognizing that consensus is perhaps not always possible but we need to move forward in order to get things done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Connor. Yeah, I just want to start by saying uh, thank you to our sponsors for putting this on tonight, and thanks for all for hanging in with us. Elsa, you did an amazing job. Thank you as well. Um, so just to close, you know, who I am as a person, my values, who I've been as a resident, uh, what I've done is what you can expect from me as a representative. Uh, I grew up, like I said, I grew up in Sierra Madre. Um, I work in La Cunada. I've, I've always lived in the greater Pasadena area. I've always lived in the foothills. Um, the foothills is in my blood. It made me who I am. And, and I understand instinctively what it, what it means to be a small town and what, what small towns like us value. Um, and that's what I will represent. One of those things, and that's been instilled in me and that is key to, you know, a lot, most all work, um, but it's specifically to this is, is relationships. People are my priority. This is, is relationships. People are my priority you know, the policies and the, you know, meetings and, and all the stuff that comes along with uh, representing uh, doesn't pale in comparison to, um, to the relationships, to being with people, to understanding what their needs are and listening to what they want to see uh, from their community and listening to what they, yeah, what matters to them and then representing those things, not my own agenda. And then also pursuing the things that our community wants in partnership and in collaboration. Uh, with uh, with all the stakeholders that are the government, uh, churches, or nonprofits uh, across the board, getting them into the room and seeing if we can find some some agreement or at least collaborate uh, to a solution. So hopefully we can keep Altadena diverse. We can preserve our natural beauty. We can you know make a safe community. Uh, we can end homelessness and we can have businesses that thrive. That's those are some of the values that I want to see done. Uh, you can expect me to do it with integrity and equity and reliability. And uh, that's who I will be as your representative. So I hope I can count on your vote and I'd be honored to serve as your representative. Thank you very much. And finally, Nick. Okay. And then there's Don after me. Thank you. Um, Nick. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I am just happy. I don't have to vote in all these tracks. <laughs> I would happily hang out with any one of you and make <laughs> decisions and powwow. How inspiring and hopeful. I mean, what a year we've had and what a nice night this is. We've got people setting up this, people volunteering to get on council, all those volunteers, people watching because they're interested in making their community better. How great is that? So I'm, I'm just relieved to know we're in good hands looking into the future. Um, and I would get in a lot of trouble if I don't say some of the stuff that I said I was going to say. Um, I, obviously, our job is to be a voice for the community. And that's going to take someone who's, who's not just strong and determined, but, but respectful and diplomatic and able to keep at something even when they run into obstacles. And that's me. I can, I can tell you that's what I do. I, I spend most of my day tending to my family's needs. Um, I'm the guy who will see a dog after nine o'clock when the SPCA is closed and wait five hours to finally coax that dog in and get that dog some, to safety. I, um, I, I'm the guy who believes that our community deserves free health initiatives and has made that happen. And finally, I'm the guy who knows helping his neighbors is not just the right thing to do, but it's gonna build a better community and it's gonna 
give back as much as I put into it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And now for the big finish, Don. <laughs> First, I've been sitting here worried that I misspoke. I, I live west of Lake, and I'm afraid I said I lived east of Lake. Anyway. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, now I like it. I've always lived west of Lake. Anyway, my big finish is that I think that whatever you address is the biggest problems facing our country or our state, and there are some big ones, uh, from COVID to homelessness to um, to uh, affordable housing. I don't think any of these problems are amenable to um, a fix from Sacramento or from Washington or even from the council chamber in downtown Los Angeles. I think every one of those things requires local contribution. Everybody has to buy in. Everybody has to do their part. That falls to us as a community and to the extent we become community leaders, we need to encourage our, our, our uh, community to take part in the solutions that are possible. I also think that as a council member, part of my obligation would be to advocate for our community. I think we, with especially with the COVID uh, crisis going on, it's going to reduce the number of tax dollars available and the number of uh, available solutions to people, and that it will be up to us as community leaders to advocate for our community to make sure that we get our fair share of the limited resources that are coming, uh, that are going to be available. And I have a long history as an advocate, and I'm very comfortable in that role, and would like to do it for a community I love, other than somebody who's paying my fee. Um, so I really thank the, the, the league for this opportunity. And uh, as several people have said, I am glad to be on this panel with these people. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. And now I will make my closing statement that I thank you all for a most stimulating and enjoyable evening. And I thank, of course, all of you. And I'm going to put in a little uh, um, hint here for an excellent program that's coming up a week from today. November 5th, the League of Women Voters will be having what we now call Thursday with the League, which will be a Zoom meeting starting at 10 o'clock. And the subject is affordable housing basics. We have an absolutely stunning panel of speakers. And you can find out, you can get your Zoom invitation by going to our website and, the, and <clears throat> signing up for the uh, event that you will see on the website. And while you're waiting, you can look, begin your exploration of the League of Women Voters by looking at this slide, which has uh, the last minute, minute voting information for you. You can take a picture of it with your phone, or you can um, <clears throat> just remember that our website is lwv-pa, for Pasadena area, .org. And you see the links over here, too. We enjoyed being your hosts for this meeting. And oh, there we go. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. And I'm going to, um, I, I would like to take a moment to thank you, Elsa. You did a magnificent job. And thanks to the League of Women Voters. Yes, we can applaud, Hannah. <laughs> and everyone, um, thank you so much. And on behalf of MBBA, I want to thank everybody, um, all of the candidates and everyone who is here tonight. We're lucky. Um, wow. All of you are amazing. And um, I just want to say that you all have amazing skills that can are invaluable to our community and our town. And whether you're elected to the town council or not, 
I hope that all of you will stay involved in one way or another. And if you can't find some way to stay involved with town council or on one of the committees, get involved with MBBA. We would love to have you. So please stay involved with the community. Um, I would also like to remind you that our next step is to vote for uh, everyone. And um, we have two opportunities to vote. We have election night from 3 to 5 p.m. at the Altadena Main Library. And then we have another opportunity to vote on November the 7th from 9 to 3. And you can see the list there. We have the two branches of the library, Grocery Outlet and Gordy's Garage on Woodbury. And you can get more information on voting at the Altadena Town Council website or at the Altadena um, election.org. And this video from tonight will be posted on YouTube and it will also, you can access it through the ATC, the Altadena Town Council um, website. And if you have any trouble making it to voting sites, then there are community volunteers who will pick up and deliver your ballot for you. So there's no reason not to vote. And I know this may not be the most important election ever for Altadena, but it is still <laughs> a very important election. And it is our responsibility to vote for the people that we want to be our voice for Altadena. So, um, Please enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you for joining us.